Do you want to know the number one secret to being the best, the most masterful at negotiations? Well, I'm going to tell you. So stay tuned and I am going to teach you the top skill and secret to being the very best negotiator there is. So stay tuned. Hello, happy day. I am Sarah Curto, and I am the career coach who helps you find your dream job, where you work less, make more money, and finally feel fulfilled and happy doing work you love. Okay, well, if you want to make more money or have better work-life balance because you have more flexible hours or you have amazing vacation or you have great professional development, uh, you need to negotiate. So there is a secret to being a incredible negotiator that I want to share with you. Now I do pop on here every week with a new training. So make sure you hit subscribe uh, so that you don't miss a single one. So first of all, if you are about to get an offer or you're preparing for one, uh, then there is this like nine tips to being a master negotiator that I want you to watch. They're really important. Um, I don't know if there's nine. There's like tips. <laughs> there's a number of them. Um, so head on over there and watch it. Um, okay, but there is one secret to being a master at negotiating. Uh, and it is one that I have learned throughout the years. I learned it on a podcast. It's not mine. It is not, I do not claim um, like whatever credit for this idea. I learned about this idea. Uh, it was on a podcast, uh, the Life Coach School podcast, great at selling or something like that, uh, with uh, Brooke Castillo and Stacey Bayman. Uh, and they were talking about like one of the secrets for, for them and how they get so much that they want. There are some certain things that they like just do that I am not comfortable, <laughs> but I can see how it would work. Um, like walking into a restaurant with a dog and no dogs are allowed and being like, oh no, it's okay. Um, the dog can stay. Um, yeah, so, but <laughs> it did teach me this skill. Um, and I don't think that this was something that they had created or like came up with themselves. I think this is something that they had heard themselves and practiced and learned. Um, so it is something that I have used ever since I learned it very well and that I've been telling all of my clients about and they have been using it too and the secret is this the first person who gives in to the discomfort of the negotiation loses they lose and this makes so much sense doesn't it because a negotiation is really uncomfortable uh, and like you can feel it so I remember the very first time I used this it was at a hotel. So my husband and I had this anniversary trip. Uh, we went to a hotel where there was a hockey tournament. Um, we did not want to stay there. So we asked if we can go to the sister hotel. And when I checked into the sister hotel, they were able to find us a room. I specifically said, are there any hockey teams here? And she said, oh, there are some, but not in your tower. And I'm like, there are none in our tower, none on our floor no hockey teams on your floor. A uh, spoiler alert, there were hockey teams on our floor that played mini sticks in our hallway like at like midnight. So mm, we were not happy to say the least. It was our first time in two years. Like this is like during, you know, the times. So I spoke with the manager the next morning um, and he didn't want to do anything about it. He was like, well, you know, there's hockey teams. I'm sure the person did not say it. And I said, I asked multiple times. I clarified multiple times because we did not want this because we just moved from a hotel with hockey teams. There was a big hockey team tournament. I would understand if there was hockey teams and then we just wouldn't stay here. <laughs> like, I just wanted to know. Um, and he didn't want to do anything. And I could literally feel my body be like, want to turn and walk away. Because I was like, like, and I could see, and I'm sure you can see too, where you would say, okay, I understand there's nothing you can do. And you would walk away. 
you would be giving into the discomfort. I wanted some financial retribution for the fact that we did not get the anniversary that we had hoped for, that we did not get the sleep that we had hoped for, that they had said that they there was nobody there and there were. Um, and I refused. Three times my body wanted to turn and walk away and give in. Three times I forced myself, staying in the discomfort. I'm just going to you live with this discomfort. It sucks right now, but it'll get better in time. Cara Lowenthal uses this example when she talks about it of having a broken leg. So like you have a broken leg. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of forgetting it right now. But a broken leg is temporary discomfort and pain. Uh, getting like $10,000 extra on an offer is a lot more than temporary. So would you put up with a broken leg for a temporary time in order to get $10,000 or $15,000? Um, and it sounds so much better in context. And when she says it, like she's just much better at speaking than I am. So <laughs> if, this, if that sounds, um, mm, then, uh, but you get what I'm saying, the discomfort. It's To me, let's talk about it as like a pebble in your shoe. How long would you walk the pebble in your shoe in order to get what you want? It's uncomfortable, but if you're doing it to walk to Starbucks and you can't stop to get a coffee that you really want, you would walk to Starbucks. So you can live with the discomfort of the awkwardness of the conversation, of them thinking some negative things. I'm sure he thought I was annoying and wasting his time. And why wouldn't I just shut up already? And I was fine with him thinking all of that. I was fine with him thinking that I was a which I was fine with all of that because I wanted to win the negotiation and he gave in he gave in to the discomfort he said I'll be right back and he left and he came back and we got it's funny I remember the whole conversation I don't remember exactly I think we got like half off the room um, so we did win we did get some financial retribution and we wouldn't have if I gave in to the discomfort we won because he gave in to the discomfort first. So go into negotiations recognizing you're going to feel uncomfortable as shit. You're going to hate it and that's going to be okay. They're going to have thoughts about you and that might be frustrating and annoying and disheartening or like embarrassing. Uh, that's okay. All of that is okay. You can be uncomfortable for 15 minutes because negotiations were, were not in Europe here in North America where negotiations last for hours over a cup of tea. They're 15 minutes long. No one really wants to have them, but you can handle the discomfort longer than they can. And that's the secret to winning any negotiation. Comment below and let me, are you, let me know, are you going to try this? Are you going to do this? Are you going to get comfortable being uncomfortable so that you can get what you want? Now, I will see you next week with another training uh, where I teach you all the things about finding the work you love, finding your dream jobs, getting promoted, getting what you want so that you can finally feel fulfilled and happy doing that work that you love. Okay, till next week. Take care. Bye.